Wojciechowicz, I'm the new business manager from uh, Orba and very, very happy that you joined our webinar. It won't be me who will be uh, a presenter, so I will just uh, join you, jump in on the uh, intro and outro of this presentation. And uh, it will be uh, Mateusz about which I will tell you in a second who will be the presenter. Uh, next slide, please. Well, we will start today with the powerful Magento B2B features. But before that, of course, I will uh, mention you about uh, Orba. Just two slides, so no worries. It won't be uh, a, a long story. I just want to tell you that we are really uh, maniacs, I would say, about the B2B and uh, B2C implementations of uh, uh, also Magento, but also the big commerce and other solutions. Uh, we got experience in uh, many countries. Actually, for more than 10 years, we, we implemented more than uh, 90 um, solution stores in, in more than 30 countries. So we got wide experience uh, on that field. And we are very uh, pleased to, to uh, cooperate with our uh, clients uh, and to, to develop their strategies uh, and, uh, and their stores. We got rather strategy of the long term partnership with the clients, and uh, that's uh, of course uh, very important for us. Uh, our clients, you got some of them on the right side, and uh, below uh, you got the certification and our partnerships because we are uh, one of five to seven official partners uh, of Magento in Poland. We we are also certified, and we are also the partners of the. Uh, big commerce uh, and uh, the Akineo, which is not uh, seen that much here, which is the PIM solution. Uh, we are also the official Microsoft uh, uh, partner. And um, well, it's not that we are uh, pushing the, uh, the solutions which we uh, want to push to, for the clients, but we always uh, choose the right uh, solution for the business and customizing it in a proper uh, way. On the next slide, Mateusz. I can just tell you that we are dealing with uh, the B2C uh, solutions, the B2B and professional solutions, and uh, with the marketplaces and uh, on which we are experts in actually building marketplaces, but, as, uh, but also uh, connecting the um, e-stores to, to the marketplaces such as eBay, uh, Amazon, Allegro in Poland, and so on. We are providing services uh, from starting from strategy, from prototyping, uh, UX design, business modeling, and developing the ideas of our clients uh, till the dev final development of the high quality uh, e-commerce solutions and the maintenance and support of, uh, of this. And that's it. If you would love to uh, meet us closer to, to just uh, talk about the, what can we do for you, how do we do that, and who we are exactly, Feel free to, to, to contact us, but it will be later. Because uh, today I can give the microphone to our wonderful presenter, Mateusz Głowacz, uh, which will introduce himself. And on my side, I can wish you a lovely hour with him and uh, feel free to, uh, to, to, to think uh, about your business and any uh, issues and worries you, you got on your side. We will uh, help you with pleasure because that's the goal uh, for us to, to, to share the knowledge about Magento. So, Thank you on my side. Mateusz? Intro the introduction. Good morning, everyone. So maybe two words about me. So I've been working in the Orba for over a year as a business analyst, where together with the rest of the team and in cooperation with our clients, we implement B2C and B2B commerce solutions. Uh, of course, that what you can see on the slide is about me is true. But however, this webinar is not about me, but uh, about some cool features that Magento offers for supporting P2B businesses. So let's take a look at today's webinar agenda. As you can see on the slide, uh, today we're going to talk about B2B accounts, shared catalog, quotation process, company credit as one of the payment methods, requisition list, and sales representative. At the end of the webinar, we're planning a Q&A session. So uh, if during the webinar, there, is, there are things uh, that particularly interest uh, or bother you, don't hesitate to leave your question in the chat below. And now I think we can directly jump into the topic that we want to discuss today. Okay, so first topic that we want to cover during this webinar is company account and its specification. 
So in Magento, there are two types of B2B accounts. Company account, which details the details of the company legal address, such as address, uh, tax, uh, VAT, ID, and credit limits. And company admin account, which lists the details of the company employee, who has authorization to maintain a subset of the company details and purchasing teams. The registration process is initiated by a customer. So let's take a look, a look at requesting and creating a company account. Company registration link can be found in the header of the website under the create account dropdown, where we can see a create new company account link. Alternatively, we can use the create a company account button on the customer login page. To register a new company, customer needs to fill all the required company information and the details about the company administrator who will manage this company account on behalf of the company. This person should be an authorized member of a company owns admin customer purchasing team. When all the required data is provided, we can proceed with submitting the registration form. After that, Magento displays a message that com company details have been received with a summary of the information provided on the registration form. The next step is to wait for review and account approval by a Magento admin panel user. By default, the company account information is accessible in two ways, through the storefront of a site as a prospective customer or through the backend of the site as a Magento admin panel user. As a Magento admin panel user, we can review all the information provided by the customer. Once we confirm the information is correct, we can change the status of the company to active. If the company is not suitable, we can reject the application by setting the status to reject it. Upon each of these actions, an appropriate email is sent to a company administrator to inform her, him or her on the registration request status update. So, as I just said before, company uh, account information is accessible in two ways. So, once the company is activated, as the company admin, we can access company data in the company profile from my account dashboard. Here, we can review all the company data and, if needed, change them. In the attached screenshot, you can see the company profile, uh, company profile page data structure. So, first, we have Inf account information section where we can find uh, the company name, company legal name, company email address, uh, VAT, tax ID. The next section is legal address where we can find the data about the street, the city, postal code, country, telephone number. Uh, below that, uh, we can find contact section with the company administrator data such as name, surname, and email address. And uh, next to it, we can find the sales representative data, but this topic will be covered later during this presentation. So the last section on the company profile page is payment information. So this is the list of the available payment methods that can be set up by Magenta Admin Panel user individually for each company in the e-store. Mm, all right, so next uh, next slide is about the company structure. So company structure is a view where customers can create and manage mainly teams and users as well. Uh, it kind of gives an ability to reflect their company or their business structure in Magento. So to do so, customers need to log in on the storefront as the company administrator or as another storefront user with an appropriate permissions and open company structure page from customer account dashboard. To create a team, customer just simply needs to click add team and provide team title and description. Description is optional, but it can be useful in case of need of presenting some additional information about the team permission, permissions, for example, 
And as you can see on the screenshot, the sales team has the description that covers the information that users with ordering permissions. After the team or teams are created, uh, we can drag company users into teams to represent business structure within a company entity in Magento. So uh, to create a new user in that view, uh, we just need to click add user and enter all the needed information, such as job title, role, name, uh, and email address. Then select the status of an user, for example, active, and this operation will let user instantly get access to the e-commerce solution. We have to do this for each user we want to add uh, or want, we want to be added to the company. Uh, and when user is created from that stage, it is he or she is automatically assigned with a company under which uh, user creation was performed. Okay, so company users is another page in storefront user account dashboard when we can find the list of the individuals who are associated with a company. So as you can see, it's pretty similar to the previous page presented, but here, instead of possibility of creating a structure, we can find some additional information about the user, such as email address, role the user is assigned to, status of a user or the team. From that stage, we can add additional users to the company. So to do so, uh, <clears throat> so to do so, we have to click Add New User button and provide all the data needed, which we can see on the attached screen on the right side. So the set of data is pretty similar that I have spoken before. So we have this job title, user role, first name, last name, email address, phone number, and status. And just like I said, yes, this pop-up structure is identical as the one for user creation on the company structure page. And of course, all, uh, all users created in that view uh, are assigned with a company as well and will appear and can be also managed within the company structure and associated with an appropriate teams. Mm, okay, so roles and permissions. So this is another page available for company administrators. And here uh, they can decide what kind of roles uh, should be available for their company e-commerce co-workers. So that is the place where user roles can be created. And at each role level, we can define different set of permissions, um, allowing company users to perform actions according to the configuration. So you can see the permission tree on the screenshot attached to the slide representing all the available permissions to be set for company users. So for example, we can create a role uh, within which we'll define the permission to create, uh, create new orders and quotes, but we can restrict access to manage or either view the company details and company users. So to do so, I would need uh, to tick an appropriate checkbox uh, on the role permissions, uh, role permissions tree. So in that case, the sales checkbox and quote checkbox should be ticked and the rest should be left blank. Okay. All right, so shared catalogs. Mm, so maybe we can start with some basic information about that feature. So basically, Magento Commerce for B2B provides two types of shared catalogs, uh, public and custom. So a public catalog is a default shared catalog created in Magento. So it is automatically displayed to all guest customers and to logged in customers that are not company users. For example, they are our B2C customers or of course for the companies without dedicated price list. So the shared catalog is the catalog that you share with specific customers where catalog configuration includes custom prices, discounts, and the structure. Uh, so the shared catalog configuration. Uh, this is the two-step process and it includes assigning categories and products of the shared catalog 
and defining the dedicated pricing for the selected products. So with another words, it means that for each shared catalog, seller can set its own structure. So I mean the visibility of categories and products and different pricing ladders, uh, levels for the selected products. So the first step in the process is to choose the products that you want to include in the shared catalog. The product selection page that you can see on the left side on the screen uh, includes the category tree on the left side and the product grid on the right. To create a shared catalog structure, we can select either uh, a whole category on the category tree or categories, of course, or manually on the product grid decide which product should be included in the shared catalog that we are creating. The next step, which is represented on the right side of the screen, is to set custom pricing. So what kind of options do we have here? So actually we can set custom pricing as a fixed amount or fixed price for each product or apply a percentage discount. So we can do it for each product individually or we can uh, proceed with this action for multiple products record at once. So for example, uh, we can select one of the categories from the category tree on the left which will affect of generating this product grid, including only the products from the selected category. And next, we can define the single discount for this selection. Okay, there are also three additional things about shared catalogs that we need to remember. So first of all, shared catalog must be assigned to one or more companies before it can be accessed by the company users. And it's really important to remember that one company can be assigned only to one shared catalog at the same time. The second thing is when the company is assigned the custom shared catalog, all its users will get access only to the products and the pricing defined on the selected shared catalog level. And the, and the third thing, when we unassign a company from a custom catalog, the system automatically assigns this company to the public shared, public shared catalog. So the default one we have created on the first stage. All right, so the next topic, uh, quick order or order by SKU. So uh, quick order is one of the methods that can be used to place an order. So actually it allows customers to build their shopping cart without the need of browsing a catalog. But from the other hand, uh, it requires from customer a good knowledge of the catalog in terms of the product SKUs. So quick orders, uh, quick order gives uh, three possibilities to build a shopping cart. So first of all, uh, we can add products one by one by specifying a single SKU and its quantity. The second one is adding multiple products by specifying multi-SKU in the single field. This will uh, result in adding all the specified products in the quantity equally one to the shopping cart. But of course, we can adjust the quantity for each of the products in the shopping cart directly. And the third option, uh, there's also a possibility to import an Excel file with a, dedica with a dedicated structure. Uh, by default, there are two columns, first one for the SKU and the second one for the quantity, which allows customers to uh, add multiple products with specified quantities to the shopping cart directly. Uh, to make it even easier, customers can download a sample file that just needs to be filled with the appropriate data and next upload it on the quick order page. To sum up, uh, I can add that uh, it gives a possibility to quickly build a desired shopping cart and proceed with the order process creation according to the, uh, to the, the order creation of the according to the defined process in the e-store. Okay, so next, next topic is quotes. So let's uh, take a quick dive into, into this topic. 
So uh, native Magento request a quote feature uh, allows customers to initiate quotation process for selected or desired product or products. So the first step is to add product or products to the shopping cart, just like for an order. But in the shopping cart, instead of proceeding to the checkout, customer have to select and click request a quote button. After that, uh, Magento will display a dedicated pop-up window. Uh, in the request a quote dialog box, uh, customer can type a comment for the sales manager and give a quote a name for the easier uh, identification later on. So when the quote has been created, it appears in customer dashboard and of course is saved in Magenta admin panel where sales manager can verify and process it. This is the view that sales manager can manage. So as you can see, uh, sales manager in that stage can apply a percentage or amount discount or specify custom price for the quote. What is important here that sales manager can only play with the total cost of the quote, but not with, uh, not with the specific products or prices of the specific products. Of course, uh, if he doesn't want, he can, uh, if he wants, he can also uh, decline the quote. But in case the quote is accepted, customer will be notified. And with one click, uh, the customer can convert the quote uh, to, an or to an order uh, and proceed to the checkout. Of course, when, the, when we create an order from a quote, all discounts that have been set by a manager are applied in the order. What you can see on the screenshot on the right side on the order summary. By default, accepted quote by a sales team is valid for the customers for the next 30 days. Uh, the process uh, which I described can be also iterative. So it means that negotiation can last till the full customer satisfaction. So for example, if the proposed discount is not as attractive as desired one, customer can resend the quote with additional comment for further verification. Sorry. All right, it led us to another topic, which is company credit. So company credit, simply put, is one of the B2B payment methods. It can be classified as a pay on account method. So credit limit can be set individually for every single company in the e-store in terms of currency available amount of credit and allowance to exceed the, the credit limit. So all the operations related to credit limit are locked and saved in Magento, allowing customers and sales team to monitor the credit limit activity and adjust the balance if needed. As you can see on the screenshots at attached, a credit limit has been automatically updated upon order creation with credit limit payment methods selected. All right, so next topic, requisition lists. So I start uh, with that, that first of all, B2B customers can create multiple requisition lists. So the idea of requisition list is pretty similar to wish list, but have some differences. Uh, I would even call them advantages. So first of all, what I just actually said, single customer can create multiple requisition lists. So the list can contain multiple products with specified quantities. The second difference is that, that if customer add product or products from the requisition list to the order, they don't disappear from the list after they are added to the order like they do from the wish list. It is very useful and time-saving solution, especially for the customers that, the, for customers creating a, recurrent orders. So each requisition list can be managed by the list owner in terms of adding or deleting products from the list, 
along with uh, editing the list name. It is also worth mentioning here that a single list uh, can be exported to the Excel file and easily shared with the other people or co-workers of the company. Okay, so I can see that we are reaching to the last topic for today. So point of contact for the company. So as I said in the very beginning, we'll be covering this topic. So the sales representative is Magento admin panel user who is assigned as the point of contact for company account and receives um, all the automated emails messages related to that company. So the name and the email address of the assigned sales representative is visible to company members from the company profile, which, what you can see on the screen here, and from the quote pages. So the customer knows who is processing uh, the quote request. So the next important information related to that feature is that only one sales representative can be assigned per company account, but a single sales representative can manage multiple company accounts. So the default admin account is assigned as the sales representative unless a different admin user is assigned. Okay, so that was the last topic for today. So thank you very much for the for the possibility to have this presentation. And now we can smoothly move to the Q&A session. Thank you, Mateusz. We will check the, the, the questions uh, because we received some of them. I guess Sebastian will share them. Can I set up a permanent recurring order list for my clients? Also, can I upload an Excel file with the order? So the answer is yes. As a customer, you can create multiple lists. And the list, all the lists can be used for the order creations. So mainly, you have to create a list of products. You can specify the quantity for the every product on the list. And then you can easily uh, use that list to quickly create orders. So here I'm referring to the requisition list feature, but also you could create such list in the Excel file, but with the SKU and quantity. And then you could use this Excel file for the quick order solution and just upload it. So the shopping cart will be automatically built depending on the Excel, uh, Excel content. All right, so the next question I've got is uh, methods of payment and transport. Is it possible to adjust the methods of payment and shipment of ordering goods depending on the contractor? Not, of, not all of our clients have available trade credit limit, for example. Mm, so yes, it is possible to define uh, available payment uh, options in eStore. So we can define the uh, payment options for our eStore at first. And then on the company level, we can choose which payment conditions can be used by the company users. So actually, 
it leads us to a situation where every customer has different set of available payment methods in the checkout. But if it comes to the shipping restriction, the answer is no. Magento Native Solution doesn't have such possibility, but it can be custom developed or such, uh, and it can be fulfilled by one of the available extensions in the marketplace. the status of goods and for example the date of restock of some part of inventory uh, so yes uh, it is possible to manage a stock in magento and also it is possible to show the, uh, that information to the customer so uh, we can present on the uh, every single product page the stock status so we can uh, show customer if, if the goods are in stock or out of stock. And there is also a cool feature called, called product alerts, which allow customers to subscribe to two types of alerts by email. So first of all, price change alert and in stock alert, which I think is the answer for the question. And of course, for each type of the alert, you as the store out, uh, owner uh, can determine if customers are able to subscribe. So if alert is enabled, a dedicated link of the product uh, page is available. So as I remember, sign up for price alert for the first one and sign up to get notified when the product is back in stock or something like this. Okay, and I think that was the last question. Yes, uh, me too. I think that that the answer we can actually say a big, big thanks uh, to you, Mateusz, that you could uh, share with us such information about the B2B uh, in Magento Commerce. And uh, I think that we can get uh, till the end and just say uh, thank you and just remind, of course, that if you would like to talk with us about any issues related to your uh, B2B Magento or if you are planning to, to develop it, or if you are willing to, to migrate it, or you are just wondering how to use it, uh, feel free to contact us. We are available, of course, on the uh, orba.co uh, or .pl uh, website, as well as, of course, uh, you can follow up uh, us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and directly set a meeting with us uh, through the Calendly application. So feel free to contact us. Uh, if you would like to get uh, this uh, uh, material as, as someone asked about it, it will be recorded for sure and we will uh, share it uh, with uh, you. So on my side, thank you very much. Have a nice uh, May weekend and uh, that's it. So let's stay in touch. Thank you.